Hello YouTube, Doobie Streams here, and today I am going to be making a guide to show you guys how to beat the Outer Worlds on Supernova difficulty in, I, we can call it less than 45 minutes, but just to be on the safe side, let's go ahead and just say less than an hour. Um, if you get this down to a science, you can go really fast with it, up like 20 to 30 minutes. But uh, I'm going to take things a little bit slower because I want to explain to you guys what I'm doing every step of the way. So that way you're not getting confused or like wondering what the hell this guy is doing. So a few things before we get started. Um, first and foremost, obviously this video is going to contain spoilers. And if you haven't played through the Outer Worlds already and beaten it, I guess, properly would be the term for it, like done the side quests, recruited all the companions and all that, I highly, highly recommend you do that first before you follow any of the techniques I'm going to show you in this video. Uh, I'm going to be skipping a very large portion of the game, and uh, I this, this game is amazing. The Outer Worlds is probably my favorite game that has come out this year. So I really, really think you guys owe it to yourselves to check out all of the side content and uh, play through all the missions first. Uh, this guide is more for people who are interested in getting the Supernova Trophy or Achievement if you're playing on Xbox, but they don't really feel like taking the time to do another 20 to 30 hour playthrough. Or maybe you're just not the type of person that thinks you can handle a game like this on its highest difficulty. Trust me, you are. I'm about as far from a pro gamer as it gets, and as you're going to see, I'll, I'll show you a way that we can do this no problem at all. Um, second point I want to make is I am playing on a PS4 Pro with no SSD upgrade, so my load times are absolutely horrible. Um, in order to compensate for this, so you guys aren't sitting here watching load screens for half the video, I'm going to cut them out, unless for whatever reason I end up talking over into the load screen and saying something important. So um, just bear that in mind, and I think that's everything, so let's go ahead and get started. So new game and Supernova, obviously. And as I said, we're just going to go ahead and skip past all these cutscenes. Oh, I'm also going to be skipping through the dialogue, uh, unless for whatever reason there is an important dialogue decision that needs to be made. I'll make sure to point that guy that out to you, so don't worry, guys. But uh, most of the dialogue isn't necessary for that. We're just going to fly right through it. Okay. So, at character creation, what you want to do is you want to take your body, dex, and intelligence and set them all below average. And then for perception, charm, and temperament, we're going to put all of them to their max. The reason you need to do this is because we want to avoid the final boss fight with Ram, which is essentially a death sentence at the level we're going to be doing it at. So with these attributes though, you'll be able to talk your way past that fight. So again, perception, charm, and temperament very high, intelligence, dex, and strength below average. And for the preferred skill sets, you are going to take dialogue and stealth. Now, the main skills we are going to be building towards in this well, skill, I should say, is lie. You want to try and get your lie to 80. 78-ish, uh, I think, will do it if, for whatever reason, you can't stretch it to 80. But trust me, you'll, you will. You'll get plenty of points to do so. And we're going to get our sneak up to 50. And that's it. Those will be the only skills that are really important. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, aptitude doesn't matter. It's pointless. I'm just going to go ahead and randomize a couple times. I got a bunch of bearded ladies last time, so let's see what we got. Another bearded lady. I swear to God, this I don't know what is up with obsidian and bearded ladies, but I, if you hit random and get a female, she's probably going to have a beard. Just forewarning. Uh, just give ourselves a name here. F. 
F in the chat. And we're going to go ahead and start the game. Can go ahead and skip past these cutscenes. Now, again, I'm going to be taking this a little bit slower than uh, what you would do if you were just trying to torpedo through it because I want you guys to understand everything I'm doing. I want it to be nice and clear, and I don't want you to be confused on anything. So the video is going to run deceivingly long, I would say. Uh, it's not going to take you as long to actually beat it as this video will be uh, once you have these strategies I'm showing you down, you'll be able to kind of just fly through it in half hour or so. So we go ahead and land. Poor Alex is crushed under the escape pod. And we just go ahead and run forward. Now, the beginning of the game here is pretty simple because we basically just run past everything. This is almost a pacifist playthrough, but there is one thing that we might end up having to kill just because he's an annoying a-hole and I kind of have trouble trying to get around him in a non-violent manner. So just go ahead and run past these dogs. Doesn't matter if they see you, they're just gonna, I don't know, cry about it or something. Start tripping balls because you've been frozen for like 50 years or something like that. Jump down here, hurt your ankle and pop some of that good old Adreno. And we're going to go over here and talk to Fe Pelham, Pelham, Pelham. Nothing you do here really matters. He's going to end up giving you the gun no matter what. And back out of the conversation as soon as you get a chance. Blow up these barrels. Pretty typical start to the game. I know nothing too entertaining so far, but I promise it'll get better. So, yep, there's the TTD. Now, this group of marauders down here, you just sprint past them. They might ding you a couple times with their guns, but with our temperament being as high as it is, we're getting like 7 or 8 health back per second. So you'll actually, huh, they didn't even hit us that time. Got hurt worse jumping off of the ledge. So when you get over here by the unreliable, you're going to take this path I'm taking straight towards the ramp. Most of the time, there he did it, that guy will jump to the side. Ow. Just go ahead and pop an Adreno if you're getting wailed on while you're going through the door. And go in here and talk to Ada. Now, no matter what you do, obviously you have to explain to her Hawthorne's dead, and then you're going to have the whole thing with having to go get the power regulator. There we are. Alright, and we leveled up. Now, as I said, for leveling up, the skills we want, thanks Auntie Cleo, the skills we want, the sk really the skill, I mean lie is your most important stat in this. We're also going to need to get our sneak up to 50, so I prefer to do this first just because you can start dumping everything into lie after you get your sneak to 50, and it'll just make things a lot easier. With regards to perks... The one and only perk that is a must-have for this strategy we're doing is Cheetah. You're going to be doing a lot of sprinting past enemies in this, and just a lot of sprinting in general, and it, it just makes everything easier. You're, you're so fast with Cheetah, and of course you can use the, lotion, the Stimu Lotion if you want to go even faster, but that's not necessary. Everything else is not really required. I, I do take the negotiator just because later in the run we're going to buy food and it's nice to have the prices a little bit lower. We're only going to be stopping for food and drinks once too because that one stop we make is going to cover us for the entire game. So go ahead, exit out the unreliable. Confront Mercer and just talk our way around her. She's She's pretty easy going. You have to just, you have to straight up come at her and try shooting her 
for there to be any, like, problems with you. I actually haven't killed her yet, either, funny enough. As I've played through this game as an asshole, like, twice. And, yep, still never killed Mercer. <laughs> she's just, she's just cool. And you're just gonna run past this group of marauders. Suave side to side a little bit if you want to avoid the bulk of their fire, but they're really not going to be able to do enough damage to you for it to matter unless you hang out next to them and try to join their club or something. Uh, we're going to go ahead, and we are going to run right into Edgewater to speak with Reed. As soon as you get into Edgewater, you want to run right for the cannery. I'm sure you guys already know where Reed is. I'm going to be uh, assuming uh, most people watching this video have played through the game at least once. But still want to explain things just for the sake of clarity. Now, when we talk to Reed... You basically can skip through everything, but you want to make sure when you get to the end that you do not take Parvati's help. We are not going to be recruiting any companions on this playthrough, and if you accept Parvati's help here, you actually can't tell her to leave the group and go back to the ship as you normally would, I guess because the ship isn't currently flying. Which means for all the stuff that we have to do in Edgewater, she's going to be running around with us. Which on Supernova is kind of a liability. I mean, it. I, I don't know. I, I feel like you don't sneak as well when you have companions with you, but maybe that's just me. But uh, there's no need to have her, so I don't even bother bringing her. And go ahead and go through all this with Reed. Yeah, here we are. So just make sure you go down to two. I don't need Parvati's help. And yes, we are sure, Reed. I don't need her help. Sorry, Parvati. You're cool, but we're not going to be playing this game long enough to need to bother getting to know you. And again, guys, if you haven't done this yet and actually played through the game and recruited everyone and done all of the side quests and done the story properly... I cannot stress enough how much you owe that to yourselves. This is just a marvelous, marvelous game. And doing it this way kind of cheapens the experience the first time through. So this is, this is definitely meant to be a strategy for people that just want to get their, snoo their snooper, snooper Nova. That's, that's the uh, DLC difficulty that they're going to come out with, Snooper Nova. Your supernova playthrough done in as little in as little amount of time as possible. Stupid loading screens. I do not understand why the loading screens are this bad. Uh, so once you come out of uh, Emerald Vale, you want to turn to the left here and run west. We're going to be looking for the riverbank, or the river, I should say. And then we are going to head right up it. Here's the river, and up we go. And you can go ahead and sprint past all of these primates. Sometimes you'll aggro them, sometimes you won't. Uh, if you do aggro them, you should be safe by the time you get past the uh, hideout, uh, like we just did. Hideout discovered. Okay, cool. So they actually didn't even bother chasing us. So we're gonna stop here and blow up these mines because one of the things I want to do before I leave this planet is I want to give Max the journal inside of this safe. The reason I do this is because it gives you a pretty decent amount of experience, I think like 17,000, and he gives you almost a thousand bits, which as you'll see between that and the bits we find at the power plant, is going to set us up for the entire playthrough as far as supplies go. Now when you come out the cave here, you want to go left and come right up through this patch of grass and jump and there you go. Go right inside the power plant. 
Yeah, I'm not sure why the load screens on PS4 are so bad. I've played a lot of games on my Pro, uh, even stuff that I would say is much more graphically intensive, I guess you could call it, like God of War, um, just played through Jedi Fallen Order, it was a great game, and the load times on any, th this is easily the worst load times I've ever seen on a game I've played on this system. I just, I don't know why. Okay, so as soon as you get in here, we're going to run straight ahead and hop over these, uh, that railing and come down here, open the door, go to the terminal and unlock the doors. Now, before you go any further, I want to come over to this set of lockers right here, the one that you're going to need to pick and open it up and 370 this time. Nice. This locker will usually contain anywhere from I've seen as low as like 125 and 370 is actually on the higher end. That's that's a fair amount of bits. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take all of this. Really, we can just take the bits. We don't need everything else. And yeah, so that plus what you get from Max for giving him the journal will actually hold you over for the entire playthrough. Now, this next part here, I'm going to explain it before I run in there. So, basically, the speed run strat for this section is you dush, ju dush, wow, I can't talk tonight, sorry guys, is you just dash through the power plant, activating all of the switches as quick as possible, and then run out, reset the enemies, turn around, run back in, redirect power. Um, there is a fair amount of dodging involved in that, especially in the last room. So instead of doing that risky of a strategy, because again, this guide is supposed to be for people that kind of want to do things a little bit easier of a way, I'm going to show you a thing to do in the middle of it. It's going to slow us down a little bit, but it's going to make the last room much safer and really just leaving the power plant much safer anyway. But for this part, let's go ahead and run through the door. This robot's going to try and shoot us, but just forget him, run up, hit this switch, turn, run past these two robots, in here and down the steps. Now, we want to keep going. Don't go through that door right now. That would be the speed, the, sp the speed, wow, I am not Englishing well. The speed run strat, but we're not speed runners. I mean, you might be, but I doubt you'd be watching this video if you were. Uh, I for one am not. <laughs> so we're gonna kind of we're gonna come down here and talk to Higgins, and Higgins won't talk to us while the, the bots are still aggroed. But they actually can't hit you from here, so just let him sit there and freak out and wait until talk pops up. Here we are. This is the thing I was saying is going to make it take a little longer, but I promise it's totally worth it with regards to safety. So pick any option you want here. Uh, Higgins, blah, blah, blah. I love the dumb dialogue in this. Now, what you want to do right here where it says, what is it you do here? Pick that one. He's going to explain to you that he was an engineer, and you're going to respond with, oh, you were an engineer. And if you worked on these mechanicals, you must know a way to stop them. This is the one you want to select. What will happen is he will give you a password to a terminal upstairs and you can go to that terminal and reprogram the mechanicals in here to actually shoot each other as well as you. And what this does is it thins out a couple of the rooms where, well really just the last room where there is, I believe, two robots and two drones. and. It's, it can just be a pain. Sprinting through there is very possible, but if you, if you make a misstep or if a drone jams up your exit, you might get stuck in the room and then just shot to death because then you're getting hit by everything but the kitchen sink. So I'm gonna go ahead, head back up the ladder here. Go up the steps. Okay, now, oh, he almost saw us here. Okay, so this robot is patrolling and we're going to have to wait because 
you can't just sprint up there since uh, you can't actually activate consoles while you're in combat and you are considered quote unquote in combat if there's anything chasing you trying to kill you. So obviously we'd prefer to avoid that. We're gonna go ahead while he's, oh, started seeing us a little bit. Okay, we're good. So we're just gonna go ahead. That robot over there might start getting a little suspicious, but it's no big deal. Suspicion doesn't matter. Stuff can be suspicious of us all, all at once. We just can't actually be pursued by anything. So you're gonna activate the console here, hit modify behavior, go to select new target, and then define intruders. And you're going to go to define intruders as space choice, spacer's choice, not space choice, auto mechanicals. And then go ahead and exit. And in addition to getting us a level, now the auto mechanicals will fight each other in addition to us. This doesn't make you totally safe because the mechanicals still seem to take priority in killing you over anything else. However, it will cause fighting amongst them in some of the more crowded rooms, inevitably killing off one or two of them and clearing up some room for you. So we're gonna go ahead, we uh, put our stealth here up to 45, and we're gonna go ahead and run back. Now, you can just kinda run through a lot more freely because most of the mechanicals you run into from this point will be beat up some. Um, so we're gonna go in here and you'll see two doors. Now, it's probably more resource efficient to take this door here to the left, but provided I have, yep, I got it. I prefer to take this one to the right. And that's because we can go ahead and just climb this ladder here and boom, here's the switch. Hit that. Forget this guy that's about to start shooting us. Run through this door, run up the ramp, pop the barrier, the barrier, the, yeah. The thing stopping you from exiting. Run over here, hit this switch, sprint back, go through the center door. And that was the room I was talking about, guys. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Don't shoot me, don't shoot me, Mr. Mechanical. Run out the exit. Crouch down before you exit, and then go back to Emerald Vale. Now, immediately upon the load screen going away, which will take about a year for me, you want to turn back around and go back into the building. Uh, this is kind of a soft reset for all of the enemies inside. So, yeah. Do-do-do-do-do. And hopefully that, uh, Mr. Here we are, turn back around, go inside. Now, hopefully Mr. Auto Mechanical there that was firing at us at the end, uh, took out the drone for us because earlier when I was saying there is one enemy that I still really haven't figured out how to avoid, there is a combat drone in here on the right after you go through the first set of doors. And you need to go past him to get to the terminal to be able to redistribute the power. And I've, I've seen speedrunners dodge him, but I for one just can't get the damn guy. Yep, nope, he's still there. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to book right, right down this hallway. And they're going to chase us. And that's okay. Immediately crouch down. Now, behind this set of bars, you will actually be safe from the majority of the damage. You see that? his It's like his energy blasts are too thick to actually fit through the bars. Dummy thick. And they can't actually do that much damage to you. Uh, so that makes dealing with him... Oh, do we got the other guy chasing us? Well, that sucks. Uh, ditto with this guy. Just go ahead... As you can see, oh, he nailed, nipped me a little bit there. Okay, just go ahead and play Ring Around the Rosie with this guy. I promise you guys this is safe. It's a little annoying to do. Let's go ahead and activate TTD here. Kind of. Buy us a 
little bit of time. Anytime he starts chasing you, just go the other way. And it might take all, damn near all the ammunition you have to kill this guy, but it's not going to matter because this is probably the last enemy we're going... Well, no, not, no probably. This, these are the only enemies we're actually going to have to uh, confront for this entire playthrough. So I guess go, you can go ahead and take their uh, take the stuff they have on them. And now go ahead and activate the terminal. Go to redirect power, continue, and we want to redirect power to the botanical lab. We are taking the power away from Edgewater in this. The reason we do this is simply put for time's sake, uh, as opposed to having to run up to the botanical lab and get the power regulator, you can just run right back to Edgewater and get their power regulator. You also get a little bit more of experience because you complete the entire quest line as soon as you go back to Edgewater. Whereas if you go with the other way, which is giving the power to Edgewater and taking it away from Adeline, um, or Adelaide, Adeline, however you say her name, um, you actually don't get all of the experience until you convince her followers to come back, which you can't do until you've completed some side quests. So... This avoids the side quest, this avoids any pain in the neck. Redirect power to the botanical laboratory. And go ahead and exit. So now, we're gonna go ahead and run back out. If you're confident in your uh, parkour abilities, I guess, you can go out the same entrance we did, and there is a set of boxes that you can like double jump up and just exit the area. I, however, am not confident in my parkour, so we're going to go this way. Alright, and as soon as we leave, you want to start sprinting like a madman to avoid all of these robots that are going to try shooting us. You should be fine. They might nip you once or twice. I actually didn't even get hit there at all. I was pretty lucky. And... Go down the riverbank, and or the river, I keep calling it a riverbank, but we're actually in the river itself. And we're going to basically go back to Edgewater the same way we came. Easy peasy, guys. Easy peasy. And here we are, transitioning back to Edgewater. Okay, once we are back to Edgewater, before we go in here to get our power regulator, we're actually going to head over to the church and talk to Max real quick. The reason we are doing this is he will give us a whole bunch of money and some good experience for that journal. Yeah, go through. None of this dialogue is really important. Uh, right here, let's get back on track, and then I just thought of something else I need to be doing. You basically just want to try and leave the conversation as soon as possible, and then he'll be like, oh, by the way, uh, go ahead. And right here, once he starts freaking out about the journal and all that, I became so desperate, blah, 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 leave. Just leave the conversation. Don't bother giving him a chance to pitch his recruit to you. Again, no companions. So, sorry, Max. You just got to hang out in a town without power for the rest of your life. Uh, I went, leveled up here. Got my sneak and all that to 50. So, now, literally, every, every skill point we get for the rest of this playthrough is going into lie. And we'll just run through here. Uh, I guess since this thing isn't going to shut up about perk points, let me just spend it. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and take the negotiator. That's fine. All right. So we're going to go down the steps. Reed's going to be here. He's going to be all pissed off. Edgewater. 
And we're just gonna, he's gonna basically threaten us with his guards. And you wanna make sure that you use the intimidate option. We don't wanna fight those guards right now. They would probably wreck our face. So we're just going to bluff them and make them think they're no match for us. And there it is. We actually get a level for that too, which is nice. Go through here, take the power regulator, and then go ahead and fast travel. Oh, I, I know, thank you. And then go ahead and fast travel back to the landing site. And as a as that thing on the screen just informed us, we are thirsty, but that's okay. We're going to get the supply problem taken care of very shortly. Uh, skill points. Let's go ahead and just dump those into lie. And again, everything into lie now. We need a lie of 80. Uh, if we, it, it's important. Just trust me. Trust and believe. I know what I'm doing, Ada. Thanks. Turn around. Now, I know all of this stuff is uh, pretty basic knowledge for people that have played the game already. So, sorry. I'm, I promise the insightful stuff is going to be coming up here very shortly. As soon as we get to Groundbreaker is where we start doing the janky stuff. Run back over here and let's talk to Ada. And go ahead and get the unreliable up in the air. Skip this cutscene. Okay, and now that we're in the air, Phineas is going to contact us. gonna bring up Stellar Bay and all that, but we're actually going to be skipping Monarch altogether. Okay, got it. Now turn around. You definitely want to go upstairs and get the holographic shroud. That is... I, it's probably not even arguable. It's the most important accessory we're going to need for this entire strategy we're using. So again, more skill points, they're just dumping them on us. Get up to 65. Perk, I don't know, I guess max TDD, sure. Okay. So, as you can see, we are getting a little thirsty there, but it's okay, once we get to Groundbreaker, we can get all the supplies that we're going to need. So fly on over to Groundbreaker. and leave out. Okay, once we arrive on Groundbreaker, you're gonna head straight, go right past Felix. Again, this is, you guys are familiar with this part, I'm sure. Go ahead and talk to Wheeler. And leave conversation. Okay. Now the first thing we want to do is get our supply problem at least temporarily uh, dealt with. I'm going to go over here to Martin at the Spacer's Choice Stand. And hopefully he's feeling nice today. Oh, yeah, good amount of stuff this time. When I was trying this earlier, he didn't have much he was trying to give me. So we're going to buy all of the food and all of the water that Martin has. Well, all of the beverages, I should say. I keep saying water, but... Um, except for the alcohol. You don't really need alcohol in this. Uh, it doesn't provide any... I think it does actually subside your thirst, but it also debuffs you when it wears off, so not really worth it. And for now, that's going to hold us over. If we end up needing more, we have a spot we can stop to try and get it. Go ahead and 
take care of the hunger and thirst that have built up. Perfect. So our first sneaky strategy that's going to help us skip a very large portion of the game is in here. Oh yeah, don't forget to grab these. I mean, they're, uh, actually I think I have enough even not grabbing these, but the extra mag picks will help us get through the last part faster. So you're gonna come in here into Gladys's office. Now, we need to open her safe. We need to get something out of it. It's Udam's seal. Now, the thing with pickpocketing and lockpicking in this game is enemies, when enemies notice you do, you're doing it, they don't immediately become hostile per se. They have like this, they have this weird like warning mode they go into. As long as you're neutral or higher, you get one warning. And it doesn't matter if you steal everything on the ship before they're able to warn you, you still get that one warning and then provided you're high enough to talk your way out of it, which for the first check, I think it's like 25 or something you need in your speech stat, whichever speech stat you use. So we'll, we can do it no problem. But essentially the idea is we want to get inside Gladys's safe and take everything out of it before one of her employees is able to get over to us and warn us. Now, you have to do this before they get to you the first time. After the first time, if you try breaking into her safe again, every person in the room is just going to start shooting you. So you, then you'll have to reload because they're probably going to wreck your shit. So if you want to save the game beforehand to make this a little more secure, uh, go ahead. Another strat you can use to help you out here is to go into TD TTD as you're doing it. Now we're going to do that now and we're going to start uh, picking her safe. Now as you can see, everyone in the room is immediately alerted and I got a guy right over here who's going to try and come up and start talking to me. But we got the safe, get everything out of it, back up, we're good. And actually no one, surprisingly no one said anything. Huh. Good stuff, we did that very well. Um, sometimes people, most of the time that I've tried this, they'll come up and say something to you, but I guess there's a spot by the safe where if you get it done fast enough, they won't notice. So now that we've got that, we're going to run over to Udam's office, give him his seal, and that's going to give us a nav key to Byzantium. Which is nice, because it lets us skip the whole thing with going to Monarch and whatnot. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to tell Bedford that we're turning in Phineas. Now, I want to make it clear, we're not actually turning Phineas in. The ending we're going with on this strategy is the one where you help Phineas. But in order to get to Byzantium faster, this is the quickest way to get the nav key is basically what I'm saying. Uh, and you want to get to Byzantium as quick as possible. So I'm here to turn in Phineas. He's gonna be like, well, what? And there we are. And he's gonna give you his whole spiel about his seal. And you're gonna give it back to him. He will give you the nav key to Byzantium and you will go ahead and leave conversation. And we'll get another level. And we're at level 7, which, uh... Almost... We've almost got enough in our lie stat. We're up to 75 now. And we're actually only going to get one more level, I think, the entire rest of this playthrough. We might get... We might hit 9, but I think the... Pretty sure every time I've done this, I've been at 8. For some reason, I'm running back to the ship, even though you could simply fast travel to it. Boom. Now, with our new nav key in pocket, we're going to go ahead and head to Byzantium. Go to Sophia's landing pad. And I think... Eh, nah, maybe. Yeah, I'll go ahead and drink something just to be on the safe side. 
grab a little bit more supplies while I'm here. And we're going to go ahead and head out to her landing pad. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, run through these doors. And she's going to stop you, but you don't really need to worry about anything she says. Just keep jumping and running into the door like an idiot till she finally opens it. Now we're going to run through here. And just here to the right, you'll see a Rizzo's vending machine. This is the other supply stop that I like to make if I need it. And purple punch, get some of that. Uh, usually there's 10 lunches in here and 10, 10 of any kind of food is more than enough to cover you. So we're going to buy all of that. Uh, she actually only had four. I say she, but it actually only had four uh, things in it. And there's nothing in that one. Oh, it should be okay, though. So let's go ahead and take this elevator and head up. Now, this next thing I'm going to show you guys is probably one of the trickier, probably the trickiest thing to pull off. But it's not hard at all. So for those of you that have played through the end of the game, you'll know that through this door is Chairman Rockwell's uh, office. And you go in there, you see the video, blah, 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 and all that. Uh, normally, you have to play through quite a bit to get to this. You have to like go to Monarch, go do all this other stuff, have Phineas tell you to meet his contact, come here, sneak your way into uh, Chairman, uh, Chairman Minister Clark. Yeah, Chairman Rock, whatever. Mr. Clark's uh, house, and then he'll give you a key to get in here. We're going to skip all that. Our friend Percival here actually has a key to get into the door. Um, you can't steal it off of him. It's, it's a little too hard. But what you can do is you jump up on his desk, you crouch down, and you act like you're starting to steal from him. The action of stealing, of trying to pickpocket him, will cause him to stand up and start running towards you to give you the warning. What you want to do is turn around, run back this way, and hug this wall. What's going to happen is he's going to come around his desk there and stand here to confront us. When he gets near that door, I guess the key in his pocket gets scanned by it, and it actually opens up for us. So again, we're going to jump on his desk, start to pickpocket him, but literally just long enough that it registers, registers to him he is being pickpocketed, and then turn around and run. This is a tricky maneuver in some ways because if you aren't fast enough with it, he'll actually get to you before you get by the door, and that, that might happen to me because I'm far from pro at doing this, but uh, so let's see. So... So, boom. Nope, did it. Sweet. And as you just saw there, before he confronted me, he opened the door, and with our lie high enough, we can just tell him to go away, and boom. We are inside the office. You guys have just skipped, like, 20 hours of gameplay. So, we're going to view the priority message, print ministry key card, and then... This is this video is hilarious, but we're just going to skip it despite its hilarity. I love Rockwell. He's he's just hilarious to me. Uh, he's going to say something to us, but we can whatever you pick there. He's not going to attack you. It's fine. So you want to go out here and you want to take this elevator and head down. See, I got a little bit of hunger going on. Just uh, enjoy myself some bunch of nanners. Spacer's choice. It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. And do do do. All right. Go ahead and go out the exit here. Okay, so as soon as you exit the HH, HHC building, you're going to make a left and head over here to the Ministry of Accuracy and Moral, Moral Key, Moral Key, Moral Key, 
moral, I'm whatever. One of those, and we're gonna go inside. Now, the first thing we want to do when we're inside is we want to run over to this commander on the left, crouch down, and pickpocket him. The main thing we are trying to get out of him is that, the UDL ID card. What that's going to do is that's going to allow us to run through this lab here coming up as well as get on the hope without having to worry about being attacked by any of the corporate uh, people there. So go ahead, open this door and run on in. It's gonna tell you what holographic disguise is, but we already know. Run over to this elevator and hit the switch. And a good tip for when you're in this state, if you're concerned about your meter running out, the meter actually doesn't uh, run out while you're standing still or any of that. So it's just per steps you take. So go ahead, go down to the lab. And again, those of you that have played through this section of the game will know exactly what we're going to do. First, you want to go in here, run left, sprint around, go past here, and into the hibernation lab. Immediately make a right, go up these steps, and we're going to get stopped by a commander right here because our first bar runs out. Deal with him any way you like. I like to use Persuade because it reminds me of the Jedi mind trick. You don't need to see my identification. Move along. The dialogue in this game is just so good. So you're going to open this door and we are going to sprint to the right and jump this rail. Voila. Activate the terminal. Transfer the big science word that something sulfidide that I don't feel like saying. I made myself sound stupid just for doing it. Dimethyl sulfoxide. There we are. Dimethyl sulfoxide. You want to transfer 100% of it. I don't know if it's a difference if you only do 26, but uh, I've just always done 100%, and that seems to be the way that works best. These poor people inside of the tanks will all die a horrible death, and you're going to go ahead take these chemicals, head out the door, pop this bar, open the door, and then head into this elevator and back up to the first floor. This will put you right at the entrance where you came in. Uh, pop another bar, forgot about that. Open this door and now you're right at the entrance where you came in. So just go ahead and head out to Byzantium. Okay, and go to your map and fast travel back to the unreliable. We are almost done, guys. Okay, once you're back on the unreliable, go ahead and head to the cockpit and you'll be contacted by Sophia. She's going to say a bunch of stuff. We're just going to skip most of it and politely decline her offer to turn on Phineas. Now you're going to head to Phineas's lab. And right out the door. Okay, now we are inside Phineas's lab. Go ahead, run up. This is one of two trips we'll be making here. This is the only place we have to come twice. We don't really have a choice in that. Go ahead, talk to Phineas. Uh, let him know you have found the chemicals. Okay, and as you can see, we can now travel to the Hope. So go ahead, just leave that conversation, go to your map, 
and fast travel back to your ship. All right, back on the unreliable, we will go ahead, head to the nav computer and go over to the hope. And now it says we are suffering from sleep deprivation. So I'm going to go ahead, thirsty as well, less sad. So I'm going to go ahead and sleep. Probably the only time we'll need to sleep now. And then... Yep, we're good again. Go ahead, head out the door and onto the hope. Okay, and again for Anyone that's played this section of the game, this is going to seem really familiar to you. Just go ahead and run up here. Patch the uh, power through. Now we're going to head up this way. And the UDL ID we just grabbed is going to let us run through here, camouflaged, not having to fight anybody. Go ahead, run past that stupid drone. Head to the left here and inside here. Hop onto the terminal and route connections through the unreliable. This guy is gonna come up and talk to us. And any anything you want again, just all right. Take it easy, robot. Now head back over here and you want to grab the Hope Bridge key card. Go over here, through the door, and then take the elevator to the right. Head through here and go ahead and take the door to get to the Hope's Bridge. And we're going to skip the Hope. Now, this is really important. Do not take the dummy option and skip the Hope yourself. Or don't even try to skip the Hope yourself because you don't have the skills, but definitely don't take the dummy option. Let Ada do it. If you skip the Hope into the sun, uh, it is technically an ending and that's the one speedrunners go for. But for Supernova, it actually doesn't count as beating it. If you want to get the trophy for beating the game on Supernova, you need to actually go to Tartarus and complete the jail. You can't uh, just skip the hope into the sun and kill yourself, and then the game's over. It doesn't work that way. So let's go ahead, comms, patch Ada through. Tell her you're ready. Skip it. And again, do not skip it yourself. Go down to do it and let Ada do it. And we can skip all of this. It's not really important. We can go ahead and skip the cutscene here. And boom, we're now level eight. I'm not gonna worry about spending those points until I leave. Your first bar is gonna run out here, so just go ahead and let the commander yell at you, lie to them. And we're fine now. Okay. So we're going to head back and hop on the elevator. Let me go ahead and spend these. Just dump everything into lie. And then as far as perks go, again, I'm, I don't, you know, I guess uh, let's do strider. Sure. I'm not even walking at all during this. I'm just sprinting pretty much the whole time, but woo, look look at that walking. Look at that walking speed. That sick walking speed. This bearded lady is a power walker. Now go back here, run past all these guys. And right on out.
back to your ship. Sadly, uh, you can't fast travel back there because you can't fast travel when you're in the middle of uh, being undercover, I guess. But it's no big deal. Alright, back inside. We're going to head to the cockpit to get our message from Phineas. Leave conversation, and we are going to head back to Phineas's lab. And we are almost done this, guys. We've got, this is the one more area after this. All right, back inside Phineas's lab. We're going to head back towards the room he was in, but stop just short. Yep, because of that guy. His whole area is swarming with corporatists, so we want to be careful. Go ahead and crouch down as soon as the bar starts popping up over that commander's head. Come through here and immediately close the door behind you. A general tip for just sneaking in this game in, at, at all, any, and any playthrough, Supernova or not, is you always want to shut the doors behind you. Enemies have this weird thing where they never go through a door unless you have already aggroed them. If they are aggroed and chasing you, they will come through the door. And they can't see through windows, as you can tell, because I'm just jumping up and down and he doesn't seem to care. We could see Phineas through the window just fine, but they can't see us. I don't know. So you're going to go over to that pig and grab the password for his terminal here and use it. Enter the passcode and don't worry about this one with personal files we want to go down to open panel and exit out. That's going to open a panel in his back lab here and boom right here Tartarus nav key that's what we want so go ahead and grab that and if you're looking for a resupply oh nice uh, always check this fridge. Occasionally he keeps two drinks in here and uh, that'll that's actually pretty clutch since we uh, didn't seem to didn't seem to work out too well with the uh, amount of supplies the vendors got. So go over to the map and just fast travel back. Okay. And here we are guys, we are at the end of the game. You want to go to your map and head to Tartarus. And it's going to tell you this is the end of the game that you should save, but we're not going to save. We ain't cowards. We just started playing this five minutes ago. Casual ass game. And this is why I said you guys want to get your um, lie up to 80. This guy's going to come through and the the guards for the prison actually have a different ID key card than the normal corporate guards. So in order to get an ID to get onto the prison, you need to speech check this guy. And the easiest way to do that is to lie. So we're gonna go down here to, what the hell is it with you people in landing violations? And then there we are, lie, uh, execute chairman eyebrow stylist over lost biometric ID. Or yeah, fine, execute the chairman's eyebrow stylist over a lost biometric ID. That'll end well. And um, apparently he does have an eyebrow stylist because it works. And he gives you an ID. So that's it, guys. You're going to be able to run right to the end of the game without any issues until we get to Sophia. Okay, now that we're on the dock, we're gonna pop into our menu and drink and eat everything because we're not going to need any of it anymore. And a quick point I wanted to make while I'm chugging down all this food and liquid is uh, I know I said 80 and then on that speech check, it only came up as needing a 70. Uh, I'm not sure why it does that, 
but I, I promise you 70 is not enough if you build yourself to only have 70. Uh, we, this is good. We can do it. If you build yourself to only have 70, you're not going to pass it. Trust me. I tried recording this video earlier and I got my, uh, I, I misremembered the stats and only put my lie to 75 and it wasn't enough. It was telling me I needed 78. So I, I don't know why it does that, but yeah. And as you can see, we can run through there. No issue now with the ID cartridge cartridge. Ugh. Really bad at talking tonight, guys. Sorry. It's 1 a.m. I recorded I recorded a video earlier, and then after I recorded that video, I tried to record this one and then screwed up. Didn't do my live stats right and had to start over. So you're gonna come out the elevator. You're going to uh, left. Ah, oh, duh. You make a left, go around down these steps, and book it. Just book it straight up. Bob and weave through the cars if you have to. It's it's not a big deal. There's really no wrong answers at this point. You kind of just want to sprint towards the end with your lie being at, I think we have 85. Uh, that's going to be more than enough to get past anything. So go ahead and transition into the pit. Okay, so you're going to make a left as soon as the uh, load screen is finished. Okay. Really thought I picked that door sooner, but we have just enough mag picks to get through there. We're gonna come through on the other side and that'll give us a nice shortcut to the elevator or lift, I guess it would be called. Cause that's an elevator right there, te technically take the lift up coming down the home stretch now guys I'm gonna run past all these dudes now quick point I want to make and before first let me go ahead and get yelled at by these guys and just lie to them okay so quick point here if you are competent and confident and competent really both in your parkouring ability with this game you can actually skip this next section that I'm about to do where you have to talk to Chairman Rockwell uh, the way you do it is you jump up here then you jump over to that thing like that like suitcase looking thing and you can land right on the lip there and then you can just hop over I however cannot do that I've tried it a few times I suck at it. I end up just wasting almost an entire bar of my camouflage jumping around without actually accomplishing anything. So it's not worth it to me. I'm just going to go this way. It takes a little bit longer, but, and the, the main thing is you have to talk to, uh, to Rockwell, which really doesn't even take long, but just not something I have quite gotten the hang of doing down. But if you are, uh, confident in your jumping ability by all means do it it's much faster so we're gonna unseal the door boom go in here talk to Rockwell Rockwell's a funny motherfucker man I, I love him uh, so yep any line of dialogue is fine you basically just want to leave the conversation as soon as possible you can't you do actually have the lie to be able to convert him but there's really no point so go ahead and take this lift. And jump up here. And we're gonna run, run, run. Go around to the center elevator. And now we are about to have our final confrontation with Sophia. And as I mentioned earlier, you definitely want to be able to skip this because there's no way at level eight with the starting piece of armor you will stand a chance in hell against Ram and his freaking 20 million combat drones on Supernova. It's just not going to happen. He will kill you ridiculously fast. 
and you'll be dead. But thanks to the stats, we, uh, the attributes, I should say, that we started the game with, we'll be able to talk our way around that. So go ahead, exit the elevator, and come up to the screen. Sophia's going to pop up. Now, mostly you can skip this, but I want to be a little bit careful here, so I explain to you guys exactly what I'm doing. Don't pick the dumb option. Uh, as far, I don't think that's a good thing. I think, uh, I don't know, I, I've tested it out once and it screwed me up, but maybe that was just because I picked wrong options later on down the line. Hit, it's over, Sophia, stand down. She's going to say she can't, blah, blah, blah. I'm here for Phineas. Let him go. Now, let's talk about this. That's the option you want to take. Again, for some of these, I'm not sure if that's the exact one you need to take, but these are the ones I took to make it easier on me. Now, Charm, you want to take this option. Do not take any of these. It's going to set off a different set of... um a different set of basically checks you need to pass and you will fail them because we don't have the points for that. You want charm. I don't want to fight you, Sophia. You're one of the only rational people left. Anyone with eyes can see that you're and she'll compliment you. And here we go. Any one of these works, uh, but I, I always just take Halcyon is changed. I always try and be diplomatic with her. I'm not really threatening until like towards the end when it's pretty clear I'm going to pass this check anyway. So Halcyon is changing and there's nothing you can do to stop it. It's time to go. She's going to say no and lament about the potential you had and why you threw in with Phineas. And then I always take the second one here, we can still work together. All you have to do is stand down. Again, one and three, I'm not saying will definitely not work, but I know for a fact two works, so that's just the one I do. And she's gonna try and recruit us. Now, a lie of 100 will allow you to convince her that Rockwell has turned on her, but it's kind of hard to get your lie up that high so you're going to want to go with perception which is why we took the stat took the attributes we did at the beginning of the game so down here number t not this down here number two you weren't trying to recruit me you were trying to control me boom and she's uh slowly starting to become unglued here and you're going to say you don't want to abandon the people of the hope. I understand. And she will empathize. And now, temperament. Again, do not select any of these two. That will trigger an entire different line of dialogue that you don't want to deal with. Use the temperament one. You're getting flustered, accept that you've lost, and walk away with dignity. Very important. Pick that one. I don't know if I can do that. And she's going to be right on the edge now. It doesn't matter which of these you pick at this point. You have gotten past her. You're good. You've made your point. And here we are. She stands down. Congratulations. And congratulations, Captain. You have outplayed me. I surrender. And there it is, guys. Congratulations. You have just beaten the Outer Worlds on Supernova. And it uh, looks like, based off the audio recording, I'm over an hour now. But there's going to be some cuts. And I also went really slow because I wanted to be perfectly clear about what I was doing. Uh, you could get this done in... Uh, I've seen... I'll link a speed run below uh, for the person who I actually got the main part of the strategy from and uh he gets it done in like 20 something minutes i believe he's also playing on a crazy souped out computer i'm guessing because his load times are almost non-existent um but yeah so all that's left now is to open this door and take your victory lap guys you've done it you've gotten that supernova trophy or achievement and uh the most difficult trophy to get 
is yours now. Go through the door, open it, take the key card off the table. Bang, bang. You're level nine now, but it doesn't matter because the game's about to be over. Insert it in, hit the switch, and boom, guys, there you go. That is the Outer Worlds on Supernova difficulty done really fast. Uh, you can say, you can go through any line of dialogue you want now through this end. Doesn't matter. Game's over. You've beaten it. Good job. And uh, I, I, if, if you stuck around to watch the end of this video, watch through the whole thing, I want you to know I really appreciate it. And I really hope that this guide was helpful for you guys. Uh, if you liked this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and uh, you will be updated whenever we release something new. We're always doing let's plays, video game reviews, that sort of thing. So, and there it is guys. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'll go through here just so you can see, I guess the end, the end uh, epilogue, but that'll be the end of that. There you go. And yep, here's the epilogue. So, congratulations guys, that is The Outer Worlds done quick. And uh, thanks for watching the video, and I hope you have a great one. Her actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind.